Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this video, I want to talk about a Free Cinema 4D plugin called Reaper. Now, Reaper's been around for quite a while, and it's made by the guys at CodeWorkers.e. Uh, sorry, CodeWorkers.de, and I'll be putting a link uh, to that in the description of this video and um, in the description on my website. Uh, so it can be got from this website here. You can change the language between English and German, and What's nice to note about this plugin, it's now available for Cinema 4D R20, so there is R20 support there. And if you need it for an older version, you can grab them here. Um, this one's between uh, R16 and R19, and you can go back even further. So like I said, I'll be putting a link in my website and the video description. On my website, uh, uh, digitalmeet.uk, you go to the store tab and then go to the free cinema 4D plugins and there'll be a oh, there'll be a list there of uh, plugins that I've already covered and if you go into one of these there'll be a video with a download link to the site that it belongs to so let's get on with um, looking at reaper okay so you just put it in your plugins folder like you normally would and then it'll be in your plugins list here so we've got this reaper object here so I'm going to click on that and what this plugin does, it basically dynamically creates rope. Um, well, not just rope. Uh, we've got a few options. We've got braids, rope, all that kind of stuff. So it needs something to actually sweep these effects along. So we're going to need a spline. So I'm just going to go up here and um, select my pen tool. And I'm just going to create a spline like so. Press escape and I'm going to uh, go into my scale tool in object mode just so I can straighten this out and scale it like this hold shift and then it will clip to 10% um, increments like so and then I'm going to do it the other way as well shift well start moving it first then shift and now we've got a nice straight uh, spline right in world zero okay so what we need to do is actually make our spline a child of Reaper. And as soon as I do that, we get this. So let's have a look at some of the settings in Reaper. Okay, first of all, we've got coils. Okay, so if I start changing this, you'll notice what happens there. And it's how many times that's wrapped around, how many coils that you've got. So I'm gonna undo that so it's back to 50. We've got the radius here. And this setting, if we start moving that down, is the radius of the actual uh, coils themselves. Do you see what I mean? Then we've got the amount of strands. So currently we've got three, and if we look at the top here, you can see there's one, two, three. You can see the beginnings of all of them. So obviously if you whack them up, four, five, six, and they all intertwine with each other. I'm going to put that back to what it was which is three and then we've got the distance so the radius actually deals with the um with the sweeps themselves where the distance is its distance from the spline that you're wrapping these around okay so that's looking pretty good so i'm gonna um i'm gonna adjust this i'm gonna uh give these a radius of one bring the distance down so they're a bit tighter increase the coils so they're a bit tighter still and we get something like this so it kind of looks like a, a rope okay so that's good uh, underneath we've got mode um, so at the moment it's on coiled rope which is multiple strands and we can actually affect the strands there then we've got some sort of like preset so simple braid it does this so you You've got a braid, and you can still affect the coils, but you'll notice that the strands are now greyed out, and that's because of the type of mode we're in. So again, we can affect how many uh, coils there are, and if we bring them down, you can see that that looks like a braid now. Okay, the next one, we've got, um, I don't even know how to uh, <laughs> pronounce that, Les Ajou braid, sounds French. Um, so this is three strands. And again, we can affect the coils to bunch them up um, to make it look a little bit more sort of natural there. And we get something like that. 
and then we've got a uh, Lizoju braid five strand. So if we turn that on, we can affect the coils and, you know, to our liking. So something like that. So you get quite a bit of control just in that tab alone, really. So I'm going to put it back to coiled rope and I'm going to crank our, our uh, coils back up. There we go. So we've got something nice and tight like that. Okay. And uh, then we've got this rail and I'm going to come back to that in a bit. Okay, so the next tab is options, and we've got rotation, which basically rotates the whole thing, like so. So you can you can animate like that, like all these settings really. You can use these to animate. Uh, we've got an offset as well, so that is the offset along the spline. So if I increase that, you can see that it gets pushed away from the spline uh, up to 100%. Can we go beyond that? No, we can't, I and mean, you can't go lower than 0%. That's a shame because it'd be good if it weren't clamped really. Um, and then we've got this from and to. So, as you can see, the whole lot gets bunched up if you um, change the from. And this, the opposite is true if we use the to, like this. Uh, then we've got the form. Now, this isn't of the splines themselves. This is of the whole thing. So, if we uh, drag this point down, you can see that it thins out at the bottom there and uh, nothing's going on at the top or we could do both or I could create a new point here by holding control and clicking on the spline and then so you could have a fat middle so you know you get quite a bit of control there which is nice I'm just gonna move that back to its original status um, so strands onto the next tab uh, we're not going to worry about isopalm subdivisions. Scaling. So this will actually scale the the um, the strand itself. So you can see that one end is 100% uh, and the other end isn't. And then you can go the opposite way as well. So you can scale the other end. And that's pretty much what you're going to get there. Next we have rotation. And if I um, zoom in on this and change the display mode so we can see its uh, frame. This rotation actually rotates the strand so as I increase this you can see the strands rotating. Uh, I don't really know how useful that will be but it's there all the same. Uh, we've got start growth and end growth. Now this is uh, this will be pretty good if you wanted to animate its growth obviously so the start growth does this and the end growth obviously does it from the other direction. You can do that. Um, parallel movement and banking and all that kind of stuff. So let's have a look at this. So, okay. Yeah, I can see what's happening there. A lot of these options you'll get in... Um, you'll get in like a regular sweep. So I should imagine that's... Uh, that's kind of what's going on here. So with banking, you can see that the sort of rotation changes slightly. Um, constant cross section, that doesn't appear to have too much of an effect. Keep segments, same again. Caps, it's obvious you can choose fillet caps or none. Uh, and interpolation, so this is where you can choose whether the intermediate points are adaptive or organic, uniform, you know, usual. Again, you'll find these on a sweep. Uh, if you think you've got too many segments, that can all be controlled from here as well. So, um, so this is adaptive, isn't it? So, yeah, there you go. So you can bring the angle down, and based on that angle, it will create more segments or less segments. Um, so you could go to uniform, and you can see there's quite a high segment count there. And if we... No, we don't want to go that way. We want to go the other way, don't we? No, so maybe it's the, um, there we go. So you can reduce the segments there. Not quite, and you can also reduce how many sides it has as well. So you can, you can bring the, um, you know, the count of this down. Now, because this is based on a spline, uh, this spline that we created, um, there's other things you can do as well. So let's go back to, our shader view without the wireframe, uh, wire 
and let's select let's hide reaper for now and grab our spline and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into point mode and control a so we've got all these points here and then subdivide and let's subdivide it by 15 something like that now as you can see i've subdivided but the, our um segments aren't equal i'd like them to be sort of uniform so i'm going to undo that go into the spline and um the intermediate i think it's this linear let's change it to linear subdivide 15 and now you can see they're spaced out equally so now i've done that i'm gonna right click on the spline cinema 4d tags no air tags there we go spline dynamics i'm going to go to the properties of the spline dynamics tag and i'm going to select this top point here and set it to fixed and as you can see it's got it's been turned purple there and um, actually before I fix that point what I should have done really is grabbed the whole thing or else we're not going to get any movement so I um, put it on its side like this go to the move, move tool and move it in the world direction just up a little bit like this now I'm going to um, attach my spline dynamics tag and set this top point as fixed uh, this is just really just an example of you know that it will still work with things like this so i'm going to fix that point then we can turn reaper back on and um let's put five seconds on the clock and i'm going to hit play and you can see that it works with those kind of uh, with spline dynamics now it's chugging a little bit and I highly suspect it's because of um, the amount of segments that are going on in here so we could reduce those um, that angle isn't actually going to do do a lot there so on oh, none I should imagine it will do nothing yeah okay cool <laughs> let's uh, Let's go subdivided, maybe. And bring this up. That doesn't appear to have an effect either. There we go. There we go. So what does it doing that do? Organic. That brings it right down. Yeah, it looks like the angle doesn't really do anything on these. It's mainly the adaptive. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Let's bring the sides down just so we can get it running a bit nicer. Obviously you can uh, you can tweak all of these settings. And there you go. There you go. That's a lot quicker. We've got dynamic rope. So yeah, that's just an example of some of the uh, bits and bobs you can do with this plugin. It's really, really handy if you need a result like this very, very quickly. Um, and you can obviously get a lot more inventive than this. Um, you know, you could make the distance bigger, you could make the radius whatever you want, and obviously you've got the amount of coils as well, you know, all of that stuff, and it will still work like that, it looks like a spring there. You'll notice that this is kind of swapping, as it gets past a certain point, it kind of flicks. If you watch the, you see what I mean? It doesn't look very natural. And this is where this rail comes in, actually. So if I was to uh, grab my spline and make a copy of it, uh, actually, I don't know whether this would work with the dynamics on it or not, but we'll find out in a minute, won't we? Um, and then go to Reaper, drag this new spline into this. Oh, you can see that it's proper messed it up there see what happens when we play it <laughs> that's quite funny actually um, so maybe not use that spline let's um, grab something else but it actually sort of just sort of controls the uh... there we go we'll put that in there so you can see what it's done it's using this as a rail so if we press play now it kind of sorts out that flicking and obviously because I've got this on a slant so's our our rope there so if i was to grab this and actually rotate the entire thing 
you, you can see actually how that's twisting and turning on the fly there. So you can actually use a rail to control. Yeah, you can see that it's twisting as I rotate this. And I think it does the same thing when you move it as well, actually. To a, yeah, depending on where it is in relation to the original spline. So there's just another level of control there. Okay, so that's it, guys. I just wanted to show you that. Like I said, download links in the description on my website and the YouTube video. Thanks for listening. For my viewers on YouTube, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can check out content at digitalmeet.uk where you can filter my tutorials by category and vote in the poll for upcoming tutorials. You can also follow me on social media, links in the description and the footer of my website. If you'd like to help support Digital Meet, this can be done via Patreon or the support page on the website. But if you want to help Digital Meet keep going and bag yourself some extra in-depth tutorial content, the Prime membership is available for purchase in the store. This will grant you access to the Prime membership area of the website. I also have a second YouTube channel called Beef Doctor, which is a bit of a dumping ground for non-3D content and where I'm streaming games. There's a link in the description and the footer of digitalmeet.uk. I hope to see you guys in the chat. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.